Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to study how to solve proportions. Now, what is a proportion, first of all? Well, it is where you have a ratio equaling another ratio. Here's two examples. One ratio is 2 to 3, and then another ratio is 4 to 6, and they are equal. So that's a proportion. You can, of course, think of them as fractions too. 2 thirds equals 4 sixths. Here's another proportion. T over 7 equals 4.1 over 10.8. It is a proportion because you can think of those as ratios. The ratio of T to 7 is the same as the ratio of 4.1 to 10.8. And we encounter proportions lots, many times, in real life situations, such as prices per pound or speed or gas mileage. There are just a few examples of where we encounter proportions in real life, wherever you have ratios, wherever you have two quantities that are in the same ratio. Okay, and there are several ways to solve proportions, the main way being cross-multiplying. But I want to show you two other ways too that work if your numbers are easy enough. One would be that we can make a table. For example, let's say I am given this proportion to solve and I can think of these two ratios, 45 to x and then 120 to 8 as being here in this table, 120 to 8 here, and I'm thinking of two quantities here. For example, maybe these top numbers, the 45 and 120, maybe they are dollar amounts, such as a person's pay or something. And then these are hours, for example. And then this would mean $120 per 8 hours, right? And this would mean $45 per X hours, unknown amount of hours. So I would put this into the table. This is my unknown that I need to find out. And then I can think different things. For example, I could take half of this. If it is $60, then it would be 4 hours, right? And then I could take half of 60 and get 30. $30 for 2 hours. Take half of that and get $15 for 1 hour. And then surely by this point you can see what goes here, right? For $45, you would have to work 3 hours, okay? So x equals 3. Another way is to think through equivalent fractions. Equivalent ratios or equivalent fractions. And for example, let's say we have this kind of proportion, we need to solve x. And you can use the same principle as you are already familiar with from equivalent fractions. If you have seen in your school books this kind of a problem, there's an empty spot here, and this was in your fraction math. And so how, how did you solve this? It is the same kind of problem as here, right? And we did it this way. We think what number is 3 multiplied by to get 9? And then we use that same number here. So over here I have 100 and 150, so I can see this number one and a half times is 150. So I take this number one and a half times to put here in place of x, right? And so that would be 27. This could be, for example, let's say we are told that 18 people out of 100 do something, get the flu each year or something. 18 people out of 100, that's a ratio. And then we are asked, so how many people would you expect to get the flu in a group of 150 people? And now lastly, the main way to solve proportion is by cross-multiplying. Now that means that we multiply crisscross. 5 gets multiplied by 18 and then x gets multiplied by 31. And those are equal. In other words, I get 31 times x is equal to 5 times 18. Like that. And now I solve this equation using normal techniques for solving equations. In, in this case, of course, you need to divide both sides by 31. So we will get x equals, now this one here is 90, and then divided by 31. And I calculated it, and it is about 2.90 2 32. Should be about, okay. It's rounded. I'll solve another proportion here. I just threw together some random numbers. And the principle is the same, no matter whether the numbers are negative, it still works. You multiply those two, and you multiply those two. And of course, 
you can write them for example this way 2.5 times 3.1 equals minus 6 times a and then if you want to you can switch a so that it is on this side or you can start just from the beginning write your equation so that you get minus 6a on this side it doesn't matter but then at this point you need to then divide both sides by this number by negative 6 so we get a equals 2.5 times 3.1 divided by negative 6 and then that is about minus 1.292 Cross multiplying might look like a magic trick, but it's not really. It's a shortcut for multiplying this original equation by a, both sides by a, and then also multiplying both sides by 3.1. So it is using this, the, the basic principle of multiplying both sides of the equation by the same number, but that is done twice, and then we in, we eventually come to this. So it is a shortcut for multiplying both sides of the equation by this and by that. Okay? It's not a magic trick. I think I'm gonna solve this from using a table. Mike might wanna make a table for his customers anyway. Let's say here is the cost and here's the time in hours. And he has here four hours and $45. And now I can think about these different time periods. For example, two hours. Oh, let's put two hours here. One hour, half an hour, and the two and a half hours that we need to know. So for two hours, it would be half of that. It would be 2250. For one hour would be half of that, which is 11.25. And then for half an hour it would be half of that, which would be $5.62. Actually, $5.625. And now, if I take the half an hour and two hour amounts, I can add those and get the final amount. There's $28.00. $28.125, you have to round that to $28.13. Okay, so problem solved. A car can travel 100 miles with 4.23 gallons of gas, so how far can it travel with 7 gallons? This time I'm going to write the proportion like here. And uh, so I put my first ratio here, something over something. I can put either the miles over gallons or gallons over miles. That actually does not matter. But usually people talk about miles per gallon, so I'll put miles on top. 100 miles per 4.23 gallons. And then in the other ratio we have the unknown. We just know the gallons, but we don't know the miles. So this can be unknown amount of miles to 7 gallons. Okay? That's my setup for the proportion, and this step is very, very important that you set it up right. Because if you don't, then you will get it, get the answer wrong. Notice that the gallons, are, in both cases, the gallons are in the denominator. And now I cross multiply. Okay? My unknown gets multiplied by 4.23. So I will get 4.23 gallons times x, and on this side 100 miles times 7 gallons. You can keep those units, gallons and miles there if you want to, or you can drop them if you are sure what your answer will be. I, will sh I am sure that my answer will be in miles, okay? So I, can, I will just drop the gallons and miles from this calculation. Here I get 700, and here is 4.23. I need to divide both sides of the equation by 4.23, so it will be 700 divided by 4.23. Okay, and the answer for this is... 165.5 miles. Lastly, if it costs $2.40 to purchase 125 screws, how many would you get with $6? This I'm going to solve in two different ways. 
one way is kind of like the table but I'm gonna go this way instead of horizontally let's say that we have 125 screws and that is $2.40 okay that corresponds with $2.40 that's what this line is meaning it corresponds with that okay and then how many would you get with six dollars well let me see that I let's see that I first double this that would be 250 screws for four dollars eighty but of course that's not six dollars I need some smaller amount if I add one dollar twenty to this then I would get six dollars right and that happens to be half of my original amount so that will work beautifully if I take half of this which is 62 and a half screws I know you can't get half of a screw but anyway let's keep it here for the calculation for now and now I add these two last ones that I have to get six dollars here and then add these two and we will get 312 and a half screws which if you are the merchant you need to either round it to 312 or 313 screws and now also I'm gonna write a proportion if I write a proportion I can put either screws per dollars or dollars per screws either way it'll work of course it's normal to put screws per dollars right it's more usual but it won't matter which way you do it and then over here you just have to put since the money amount is on the bottom put the money amount here on the bottom too on this side and then your unknown so I will cross multiply 240 times x equals 6 times that like that and now x equals that number which is 750 divided by $2.40 and you should get the exact same answer of course okay Okay, we're all done and I hope this was helpful.